Right, so I have returned once again, actually covered the fate episode of Jojo Part 5 Golden Wind. So yes, this happens to be the fun the fun episode of Jojo Part 5 Golden Wind. And as you know as we know as we know so the words correctly, my, my voice is dying. <laughs> um yeah, the previous episode actually was uniquely disturbing in a way. It wasn't to the degree that you kind of know Jojo jo actually kind of be in its own way. It's very kind of like, um yeah, it's it's a lot to take in when you think about it, the whole thing with Diablo, because Diablo literally is screaming for his life and it's one of those things that you don't excuse what he's done, but you do kind of see from the other perspective how disturbing the actual ability actually is, and it actually kind of doesn't really give a sense of context to how powerful uh, Gold Experience Requiem actually is. And it's not just as some people tend to actually kind of describe it, describe it as a kind of Deus Ex Machina, it's very much more than that. And yeah, I mean, you actually got to see it firsthand. So yes, we actually have retention cover episode 39 of of Jojo Part for God. I oh, can't even speak. Ah! We actually have retention actually cover episode 39 of Jojo Part 5 Golden Wind. And yeah, I mean, now we're actually kind of heading into a very unique place for the ending of Jojo Part 5. So I actually wonder what that actually might for you kind of entail for the whole entirety of the part because it's 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 taken place beforehand so you actually kind of wonder what does it all mean towards what to the final outcome of the whole entire show so anyways, so anyways actually want to actually go live so gone live for episode 39 of jojo part 5 gone wind and as I say, every, as I say, every single stream, I believe with that, we're actually good to go. But are we though? That's the question. On that front, I certainly are. On this front, are we? Certainly are as well. We're actually good to go on both fronts. So, anyways, actually, but actually gets actually gets shown a road. So in three, two, one. So I start to think absolutely now. But yeah, it's um, it's very interesting. Um, the end of part five in a way when it when it comes to the envelope because um, it's not um, it's not a typical way to take out an antagonist in a way. It's kind of very unique to its to its own kind of um, part, and also then overall and kind of like the anime sphere in a way. Like I just kind of I really appreciate it because it's actually kind of very different. It's a different kind of way to dispatch an enemy, like kind of sending him into this like infinite death loop that you just don't know a way out of, and he actually all you can do is scream. Like being alive as you get the, as you get kind of um, dismembered. It's just it's like, ugh, it's everything I guess he tried to avoid, and actually then it just came crashing down towards him, and then also dying kind of the most unremarkable way in the universe, kind of in his in his own eyes. Like, he has his sense of grandiose, he has a sense of false grandeur that he just kind of, he thought to himself, well, I'm going to die in the best way possible. So it's actually, it's, it's very, it's very kind of interesting. It's unbelievably cool. It's just the, it's just the Dio. The Dio is amazing. We're actually ending today. It's a fun episode. <laughs> Mister, that pose. That pose, Mister.
apparently there's actually quite a lot of um, like speculation to who the sculpt actually truly is towards the whole entire part. I'm also kind of realizing I actually heard the voice actor for the um, sculpt beforehand as well, like very recently. I should mention it's actually quite is that it's a very subtle um like um it's a very subtle um clue to who you might actually might be. Yeah, his voice actor sounds so familiar. Prophecy stones. <laughs> Prophecy stones. We've got one more meme right at the end. But yeah, it's actually kind of, um... Oh! It's actually quite a very interesting way to actually end the whole entire part.
<clears throat> I should also mention, it's actually kind of like the first fight like Mesa's actually kind of been in. He actually hasn't hurt himself just yet. So there's, there's something. Good point, actually. Good point. Honestly, I like how they actually handle this, handle this episode as well because it's actually very subtle what they're doing with a lot of the things with his character. Also, I guess in a way, it's actually quite uniquely disturbing as well, in a way, like a rock just kind of oozing like that, with a very, like, human figure in it. It's kind of, kind of, it's kind of ill. Honestly, if you actually get a clap for Mesa's episode, he's actually done quite a lot and actually has not hurt himself in the process. Gotta give props to the boy, he's done so much so far. Uh oh.
got you got to admit, Mister actually is a very good boy, though. He's a very good boy. <laughs> Poor Fugo, the background is just like, damn it, why am I here? Why did I get hurt again? <laughs> oh That was unbelievably good. And it's because it, it kind of, um, it, it really sets into motion the whole entire part in a way, when you think about it. Like, the, un, the unintentionally set, set, set into motion the events of the whole entire part. Which is unbelievably fascinating. It really does, actually. It's a really, it's a really um, interesting way to place to put it. To be honest, when you think about it, because it's kind of like it's at the end, but also at the beginning. So in a way, it kind of, um, it's very much, it's very much telling, telling you that they did in theory defy fate originally, but then look what's happened now, and look what's actually kind of the outcome. So everything kind of came true in a way.
<laughs> He's so adorable. <laughs> And there we have it, Golden Wind. Ah, look, it's at in the and then Bruins at the at the bottom as well. Ah, ah, it's so good, <laughs> it's so good. And there we go. That's 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 part five. Like all all in all, we actually finished it. We actually, um, oh boy, second time actually for me, technically speaking. Cause actually, I already read it beforehand. But yeah, I mean, it's a very interesting way to end it because it kind of it. It adds. It's a. It's an interesting way to bring the events full circle because normally not at ten times. It's established the beginning, and that's actually how then you understand why as time goes on, then the actual um, events kind of come to fruition. And actually, then at the end, it kind of ties itself together, which in theory it did. But then at the same time, when you think about it, the way they actually kind of handled um, the sculptor's actual kind of identity and actually then subsequent character. It's very interesting overall to the whole entire plot because it kind of then already it already tells you beforehand before the events even started that the events of fate were already set into motion like they knew that there actually was this idea that they will some of them will lose their lives but at the same time those who lose their lives will actually then kind of um, bring to fruition some hope and yeah i mean it's been debated who the actual sculptor is but there's actually kind of very it's, it's very very evident evidence in the episode who he's meant to evoke like there's there's this idea that you can tell because the way he's been shot in his hands, the actual uh, head like the kind of the headband around his back back of his head, the and then the kind of it's it's very kind of it's leaning towards a very kind of bib biblic, is that is that the word? Oh, after credit scene, boys, after credit scene. Oh, <laughs> he's so, he's so amazing. Oh, even better, even better, boys. So yeah, it's um. It's because I remember because I, I remember I remember about the whole thing with the sculptor because someone told me in the stream at the end of part five that he's meant to kind of evoke him, and I actually kind of I kind of thought to myself, oh yeah, but then when you kind of look at it from the anime perspective, there's there's evidence in in him that he's meant to he's meant to signify like he's kind of it's 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 very um. It's very kind of like I don't want to kind of say he's he's him technically speaking because there's there's, there's not being credible covered credible evidence or kind of a confirmation that he actually does him free of is him but the way he looks the way he actually kind of did him free gets shot it's very much evoking that biblical kind of character and then when actually actually kind of understand the actual importance of his stand on the whole entire part it then begins to actually make sense even more so like it's one of those things that it's actually quite interesting like in a way they kind of met in theory kind of god before they actually even began and actually this then sent into motion the whole entire thing of them kind of they in a way couldn't escape the fate they had but the fate they had then gave hope to everyone else which actually then it kind of then tells us straight away that their deaths didn't have didn't have no meaning it was actually kind of um hello it's actually kind of the major things because a lot of people said Anansha's death is just kind of like it's just there and it happens but 
when you think about it, the way the actual episode didn't very kind of then handle the idea of fate, it then makes you wonder that each death in this part didn't very kind of brings bring them closer to the sense of hope. Like Anansha, um, Bruno, and Abakio's death brought them closer to that sense, and also I guess in the way um, technically speaking, Pornev's actual character as well. But it's one of those things, actually quite interesting, like, he he did in theory um, tell us that, and then what she actually kind of realised, it's true. I did say it originally, because I said it with the idea of how they all went out, because, as I said in part four, part four's deaths were quite, um, were quite shocking, they're quite disturbing, but here is actually kind of very much this sense of, like, it's it's very biblical. It's actually kind of the, it's kind of the major thing, there's a very biblical sense of death to them. Yeah, they chose. It's, it's exactly that. Like, and 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 they actually kind of then understand when once they died, the way they went out, it kind of proves to you there and then that they didn't die for they didn't die in vain. They died knowing that that they've done something. Abakio kind of helped them find the identity of the of the Avalo. And Ancha kind of then in very kind of then propelled that even more forward. And Bruno kind of did in very kind of just do the best thing ever. He's just the, he's the best he's the best boy. So those things it's 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 very it's very kind of fascinating because they all did something and the way they went out proved that because they didn't, they didn't die they didn't go out and then we see them kind of ascend to heaven in kind of a very disturbing way. No, we saw them ascend to heaven in quite a beautiful way, kind of very in a way in a very church like manner. And it's actually one of those things it kind of then proves to you that that is what this is this this is this is invoking in a way. But yeah, I mean, if you go back to the whole entire part itself as well, the idea of the whole entire part is actually kind of, it's it's fate. The whole entire part is very much fate. I mean, it's, it's very glaringly, glaringly obvious. But it's actually kind of very interesting also how some people do in free defy that fate because we saw, we saw with Trisha's character. Trisha's character defied fate quite a few times. Same thing with Jonah's character and actually then subsequently other, other characters in this part as well. And it's actually quite interesting to see this whole entire thing then play out like that. And then actually then, what does this whole entire thing mean? Like, a lot of people do in free kind of then say Jonah's character didn't really kind of have that much development, which I don't agree with at all, because you do in free see a development in his character. The problem is with Jonah's character, he's a very stoic person. Like, he doesn't ev he doesn't kind of tend to let emotions get to him. Like, you tend to actually kind of understand that he's a very kind of, he's a very close person. Like, he's, he's kind of, you don't really get to see that, you don't get to see the extent of how an event does in free kind of affect him. Granted, there were, there were points in which, and Twitter did in free kind of actually kind of brings to light, is the way that he shakes, like, he was, he shook as a child, and then subsequently, when events do get in free too tough for him, he does in free shake, and it's actually one of those things, there and then, it kind of proves to you that he's kind of a very multifaceted kind of character. And as well, once the event with Bruno happened, it proved to you there and then that he didn't free for defenses power he didn't know what to do. He wanted to save his friend, but he couldn't do anything. And all those things, you do in free to see this sense of development in his character. And especially with some of the stand users as well. Stand users didn't free allow him to actually kind of see there is scum in this world. And she has to kind of get rid of them. There's no sense of kind of, there's no sense of like, there's a different side to him. No, different sides to them. No, they're, de they're just kind of inherently evil. So I don't kind of agree with the fact that they don't say that Jonah had any development because he actually didn't free have a lot of it. He actually is a very interesting character for that said reason. And yeah, I mean, when you think about it, this whole entire part really was just so freaking good. Like, I mean, it was good in the manga, but I think the anime didn't very really kind of propel this even more forward. That's one of those things that I just, I can't, I can't stress enough how amazing this part actually was animated. Like, the manga's one kind of, like, beast, but the anime is just, oh, it's just above and beyond. It's just, it's incredible, this, this part. The actual animation, the actual sound design, every single thing about this part was legit incredible, and I just can't, I can't stress enough how good it was. And I kind of, I grow, I grow a fond appreciation of the of of, uh, of Diablo's character because I always thought Diablo to be one of the weakest, like kind of antagonists in JoJo that I saw up to that point because you didn't really get, to see, you, didn't really, you didn't really get to see much of him and what he, and what he did in free kind of possessed was the whole entire part. You got, you got to understand that he's kind of like. I don't want to. I don't. Wanna, I don't want this whole entire thing to get out, and I've got to actually save myself from this whole entire thing. But once you kind of take the events differently, you get to see a different side of a character. It's actually very. He's a very kind of again, multifaceted character. Actually, doesn't really kind of have a lot more going on behind closed doors than what we actually understand to actually kind of be his character. And it's actually one of those things that I, th I feel as if the anime allows allowed us to appreciate a lot of more of the micro kind of events of this whole entire part. Like, a lot of the character kind of moments as well. Like, the manga didn't free kind of do that quite well. Don't, don't, get, don't get me wrong, I'm not faulting a rock in any way, shape, or form. He's an incredible person. But I feel the anime kind of just propelled it even more. 
So you just kind of like to see a different side of this whole entire part. It actually just only comes out if it's actually kind of an, like kind of, kind of adapted. Like it doesn't always work because you get it with films. Films don't always work adapted, but here it just propelled the medium forward in, in, in essence for Jojo and actually kind of now get to see what this part six in, like entail for us now. So yeah, I mean, I kind of, I can't fault, I can't fault this, this part at all in any way, form. It's just, it's, it's incredible. I'm just sad to see it go because I just want to see another episode of the part five. I do really hope, though. Granted, I don't think they ever will, but I do actually hope one day they might animate, animate the, um, the side story of Fugo as well. Because I mean, it's not. It's nothing extravagant. Don't get me wrong with his with his story, but it's just it, it kind of ties with a lot of a lot of loose ends of his character. It kind of actually kind of to see a, more, a, a bit more of him. So one day, hopefully, I'm going to see that because I do actually kind of want to see him and see him a bit more. But yeah, I mean, I just it was just so good. This whole entire part was just so good. I can't stress enough. I just I loved it. We we lost some good people in this whole entire part. We actually kind of. Um, we found we <laughs> we found evidently the kind of the, the most unintentional thing ever in my, br my in my Bruno curtains, and yeah, I mean it's been it's been so much fun. I've actually kind of I actually kind of and I've covered two two parts animated now at this point. Part four and five actually kind of caught the whole entirety of JoJo, so I actually covered every single part of JoJo. But um, yeah, it's been an honor to actually co cover this whole entire part. Actually, kind of be here every single week covering it with with everyone. So it's been so much fun. Of every single second of it, it's just so freaking good. I just oh, part five is just incredible. So I do actually hope everyone else enjoyed this whole entire um, series of um, reviews for almost a year now at this point. Actually, when you think about it, like what? Uh, one, three, thirteen weeks away from actually being a whole entire year. One more quarter, it would have been. It would have been, um, it would have been a whole entire year's worth for JoJo. But yeah, I mean, as said, you actually have enjoyed this whole entire stream series as a whole on Twitch. Then do leave. Follow on Twitch because indeed it's been quite a bit. If you have enjoyed it here on YouTube and you do want to leave a like, then do leave a like because indeed it does have me quite a bit. If you have enjoyed it here on YouTube and you do want to stay a bit longer, then do leave a sub because indeed it's been quite a bit. If you have enjoyed it here on YouTube and you want to stay a bit longer, stay a bit longer after the whole entire point, then do free follow me on Twitter or join my Discord as well. Both of those will tell you streams are live streams I do as well. But for the final time, it's been an absolute honor to actually kind of be here covering JoJo Part 5 with everyone. And yeah, until Part 6, I mean, if anyone actually wants to what anyone actually wants to read Part 6, I actually have the whole entire part on YouTube at the moment. So if you want to kind of carry on, it's actually there up to Part 8, actually. So do, if you do want to kind of continue, it's actually there. So actually, um, I, hope you, I actually hope you actually have enjoyed the whole entire series as much as I have. It's been so, it's been so great. And yeah, I mean, until next time, I've been Deep in a Driver. I'll see you guys later. Bye for now.